Hey everybody, um, good decision to come and watch this video. Um, I'm going to help you get an A on this assignment. Um, I gave this assignment uh, watching the Bis Mythbusters video about walking or running in the rain um, last week so you could see basically what the roadmap is to doing a scientific investigation and for you to wrestle with it on your own. Um, I started out with this and uh, let's just for this video, I'm going to ask you to do something and then you just stop the video and do it and then come back on when you're done. So for right now, uh, whenever you're planning uh, an investigation or any scientific person or even planning a birthday party or a trip, um, there's things that will help ensure that it goes right. and. Basically, those are the steps of the scientific method. So think about what you should do before a lab. Write down 10 things that you can think of what you need to do before a lab. What are five things you should be doing in a lab? And then five things that you should do after a lab. All right, so turn off the computer, turn off uh, this video and type in those things. So for 10 minutes, ready, go. Okay, welcome back. Um, take a look at these things that you wrote and compare them to the last slide. This last slide right here, down here, it's slide number seven. It has more than what I asked you to do. So take a look at these and you can take any of these and put them up front. Um, type it in, don't make a screenshot of it. <laughs> but I want you to actually um, type in things that you left out or you think they're good ideas. All right, so that's slide two. That's your pre-assessment. Okay, now for the Mythbusters Walking and Running in the Rain Scientific Method Lab Report, the things that scientists do is they consider what is the reason they're doing this lab. Uh, part of the reason is so that they can tell their friends why they're doing it, this crazy thing or whatever, or for asking people that they're asking to promote them or help them with the funding of it. So um, the purpose of this, I would think, would be to find out how to stay dry at school on rainy days. Uh, that's what we want to find out because it's miserable going through a school day in wet clothes. So I think that's a pretty good reason. Uh, you might be able to get uh, maybe the Lions Club or some other social groups to help support you in the purchasing of materials to find out. Um, okay, and then the next thing is, what is the question that you're trying to answer? Well, we're trying to find out, is it worth running in the rain? Or is it better just to walk? Um, this is not the best question. In fact, I think the question that I have in, on slide one is the best. Is it, will you stay drier walking or running to class in the rain? Okay, so that gets across the idea that you're going the same distance. You're just going a different speed, right? So that is the question. Um, now, for research, you're running down what you already know, what other people have found out, is it um, things that may help you come with a better prediction. So in the video they talk about, well, when you're walking, most of the rain falls on your shoulders. And then when you're running, a lot of the rain lands on the front of you. So see, this information will help you come up with a good hypothesis. Other things, um, that have to do with rain and getting wet is that how many days of rain, how many days a year does it rain? So you can look this up actually. Um, it rains, I don't know, I think it rains like 200 days a year. And how many inches a year? And then you can write about, well, this is important for me because I don't like using an umbrella. People here don't wear umbrellas, so use umbrellas, so it'd be very useful to those people. Um, you could put that 
take things that you get here in research and put it in different parts of your, re, of your uh, lab report. Now see these blue words with the underline? Those are links. So um, here's a video about asking good questions. And right here is a good video about reliable sources. For example, if you said it rained 365 days a year here, I'd say, no, that's wrong. Where'd you get that information? If you state where you got that information, that covers you a little bit in case things didn't go right. But definitely you should think about where you get your information from um, when you're doing research. So moving on. Now that we've done the research, now we should be able to come up with a prediction uh, or a hypothesis. So um, based on my research, I predict this is my, this was mine, my prediction, my hypothesis, um, that if I run, I will stay drier because, now you guys show your reasoning, your thought, your evidence, uh, I will be in the rain for a shorter time. That's right, because if you run in the rain, you're not in the rain for as long a time. If you're walking, it's landing on you for a longer time. So now thinking about, well, what are the variables? Those are what things, basically I, I put down CID, like if a cop pulls over a driver, what do they say? Let me see your ID. And that's kind of an easy way to remember, but it's also you're looking for verification. So, so C stands, stands for control. control. But they what things do the same thing for each trial? trial. Well, if well, you're, you're, this, is, this is an artificial situation where we're not really not using rain, because it, it's hard to keep a steady amount of rain <laughs> right during a lab. So what we would do is the amount of rain, um, or um, actually I'm going to change that, the amount of, of spray from a hose, our artificial rain, the, um, the amount of spray and the spray will, we're going to say that's our rain. Um, now the type of clothes that we're wearing um, and we'll get into that as we'll think about these things and we'll be adding to this. This is all these different things I hope you've noticed will change as we find out more. Okay. So um, the type of clothes, the direction of the rain. Will the, we have the um, sprayer coming from on top or will it be going from the side? It should be the same every time you walk or run in, during this uh, experiment. The wind speed, um, the distance that you walk or run in the rain, distance. walked or run in rain. Okay, hopefully you can come up with some more. Now, what is the independent variable? What is the only thing that's going to be changing as we do this experiment? Well, that'll be whether you're walking or running, or in other words, the speed of you walking in or running in the water. Everything else will be the same. All those things that stay the same are called the controls. The thing that you're testing is the independent. And what's going to change because of you walking or running in the rain? That'll be how wet you get or the mass of your clothes. Now, why would I say the mass of your clothes? Well, we're going to figure out whether it's better to walk or run in the rain because we want to get less wet. There should be less water on the clothes if, if you... Um, are improving your situation. So here for procedure, the procedure should be um, set up. Now, some people say get your materials. I think that's usually a pretty um, useless um, procedure. You should just get right into it. You say set up a sprayer. Um, measure distance 
Okay, so now you have to decide how far is it you're going to go in the rain. I mean, you really don't have to measure it, but um, let's just say 100 feet. Might want to make it smaller if you can't get an even spray for all that distance. Maybe you can just cut it down to 50 feet. Whatever realistic. You might want to, even after you've written this up, as you do it, you might say, hey, we're going to change this down. Um, basically, you can change everything until you publish it to other people for them to look at. Okay, what else do you need to do? Um, Set sprayer. Uh, you need to uh, put on um, on basically um, close. So maybe a t-shirt would be enough. What do you think? Put a t-shirt and um, so you put on your clothes. Um, let's, let's just say we're going to do a t-shirt. Now the Mythbusters might do something different and you can write up an extra one for extra credit or just change this. Uh, it's just good for you to think about this. So put on your clothes. Um, now we're going to measure how wet you got by your clothes. So what are you going to need? You're going to need a, a scale, some kind of scale uh, to measure the clothes as to how wet they are. And maybe that's enough. Okay. And so, by the way, do you notice that whenever I get to a blank, I double click on it, and then whatever I type after that is the color that is easy to see? Okay. So, uh, procedure next would be um, turn on sprayer. and walk. Um, the distance. All right, and then after you walk the distance, should you measure your whole body or just the t-shirt? Well, if you do just the t-shirt, so you'd say take off t-shirt and weigh it. Okay, and so the next thing would be is repeat uh, steps one through three, but run. Okay, so the big idea for a procedure is to write it up so anybody can repeat it and verify whether what you did is true or false. You know, there's lots of people out there that try and fake you out for whatever reason. And so think about that, about being honest, as honest as you can. OK? So what would help somebody repeat your experiment to verify if you're right or wrong? And that would be to make an illustration. So what you could do is just write it down on a paper and then take a picture of it and post it right there and list down the materials. Okay, so after you write down your materials, then it's very easy to write down what the materials you'll need. You'll need a hose, you'll need a sprayer, nozzle, uh, you need of course water pressure, um, you'll need, um, you don't really need to measure that distance just as long as the same one each time, but um, Okay, maybe you need a, a tape measure. 
um, you need um, a certain number of t-shirts. Uh, let's say if you're going to re do each one twice, you'd need four, right? Four t-shirts. That's an important thing for the materials. Not just what you need, but how many. Um, and a scale. And I think that's about it. Okay, so moving on. Uh, data table. Uh, you can have different people do it. You need, actually, you know what we should say is two shirts for each trial. For each trial. Okay, that would be run walk or maybe that wouldn't be right because a trial just running one time that's a trial right um, well it's just I explained it there I think it's clear that's uh, basically the whole idea of school is to practice thinking relating and communicating so use your best writing when you're doing this so the name could be um, well, uh, what are the name of those Mythbusters guys? We'll get that in a minute. Uh, where they run or walk. And then I left this blank because you need to, I was hoping you would go, oh, we need to find out how, what is the mass of shirt, of t-shirt. Okay. So, um, Let us see here. That seems pretty good. Now, we can't go further than this because we don't have the answers yet. So this is all pre-lab. Everything we just did is pre-lab. So what we do what, when we watch the uh, Mythbusters, we're actually going to do the in-lab and then the post-lab. So uh, let's watch the video here. Now, have you ever done this? You grab the tab here, click on it, pull it down, and then you throw it to the side. Have you ever done that? Let's do that again. Throw it to the side. It's not working. Okay, we're going to go like this. Throw it to the side. There we go. And let's get the video. not coming up so let's see what happens here okay what you could do is you click on this and <laughs> it's going crazy okay what are we doing here um, let's escape here oh that's nice so I wanted in the first place. Let's go down here. Get this. The myth this that here. you stay drier if you run in the rain. Basically, it's a bit of practical advice. Okay, that's not working properly. Okay, let's go down here again. Grab this. Okay, this is real life, people. Let's go here. Let us get rid of the websites we don't need. It's after school, so I can do that. Um, Mythbusters. That should appear. There we go. Okay, so I can shrink this up and drag this over here. 
This is a good thing for you to practice doing. There we go. And so let's watch this thing and we'll make changes as we go through. The guy's name is Adam and Jamie. The myth that you state. So let's put that in here. And let's increase the size of this. So name, Adam. And Jamie. Okay. And so here we go. Be drier if you run in the rain. Basically, it's a bit of practical advice. Run if it's raining and you won't get as wet than if you're walking. Seems to make sense to me. Common sense? Since when have the Mythbusters let that get in the way of a challenge? The idea is someone walking through the rain will get, stay in the rain longer, mm -hmm. but the rain's only falling on their head and shoulders. Whereas someone running through the rain is actually picking up rain on their entire front. Okay, right there, they have their evidence or their line of thought. So all of that could go here on your hypothesis. So let's go here. Hopefully I can make this larger. Okay, I think this one's pretty good. I will be in the rain for a shorter time. You can add on to this and when running let's see well actually that goes against this <laughs> you say running you get wet on the front and top so maybe I wouldn't want to put that in anyway that's kind of um, you could say the Mythbusters say that you'll get wet on the shoulders and the front when you run. So anyway, that's more stuff that you can write in. Okay. So what, we just wait for the next rainy day and go for a stroll? No siree, the Mythbusters will need controlled conditions. We're going to have to be really careful about this. It's, it seems like a, a simple thing. It seems pretty straightforward. Yeah, but there are actually a lot of factors uh, to, to consider. You've got, you know. Okay, he's about to give you the control variables. So let's get, okay, there we are. We're right there. The, the velocity of the rain, you've got. Velocity of the rain, that's a good one. And this is why it's good to work with people. And that's part of what I say is relating with other people. If you can work with other people, you will be a success. So um, velocity of rain, how hard the rain is falling, right? Velocity of rain. Just as long as it stays the same, you'll have fair trials. Okay. But, uh uh, the speed that you're running, you've got all, all these different things to, to factor in there. Okay, the speed you're running. Did I put on something for that? I didn't put that down. Although we did say speed. Speed of, that kind of is obvious. Speed walking or running, okay. The setup, an indoor course 100 feet long, which Adam and Jamie will walk, then run through. Okay, what are they doing? They're drawing their illustration so that they can have people help them create the situation, create the uh, exam site uh, for them. So whenever you can, draw pictures so people that are looking at your um, 
lab report, understand what you did without having to read. It, you know, word, a picture is worth a thousand words. So draw as, much, as clearly as possible and label what the parts are. In a downpour of homemade rain, they'll wear identical cotton coveralls, which will be weighed after each test to see how much rain they've soaked up. Now, all that means they'll have to manufacture some very precise precipitation. It's time to walk the line. And okay, did you see that? To see how much rain they've soaked up. Jumpsuits. They use jumpsuits. That's a, a whole body suit, like uh, what workmen use in a wood shop or um, painting or something like that. So that's a pretty good idea. Um, although we don't have money for that. Uh, I think maybe we should just stick with our t-shirts. Now, all that means they'll have to manufacture some very precise precipitation. It's time to walk the line and find an answer to this age-old mystery. Walking. Our high-speed camera running at a thousand frames per second captures every single droplet. Adam and Jamie will walk the course twice, once with wind, once without. And stop. Each take is timed. Then the coveralls are straight. Okay, so they timed it. So let's go to our data table. And we don't have a column for time. So maybe we can put in, in this third column. Let's see. By the way, this might be a good time. Uh, this last column, advice and observations. These, whatever you, you think of for advice, uh, for doing it better, or observations, which um, might help you come up with another experiment. Be sure to have a space to write those down. Okay, so why don't I just add another column? So how do you do that? Do you know how to do that? You highlight one of the columns, or actually you don't even have to. Um, then you tap it, and then you have insert, you, insert, you tap your pad, and insert column to the right. That's where I want it to go. And it shrinks all the other guys down. So that's kind of cool. So let's write down speed. And who was the guy that just, it was 18.6, I think, wasn't it? 18.6. And I think what I want to do here is we'll do the walk first. Let's make this. Shrink that down a bit. Walk. Run. Okay. So that'll tell you here. So we'll put a slash here. So this 18.6 relates to the walk. And we'll do the same thing with the mass. And actually for this, in this situation, we'll just change this to their jumpsuit. This is all part of the thinking that goes into doing an investigation. I wanted you to first think about what you would do, and now we're just gonna write up what they did. And if you wanna do it yourself, you're basically ready to go uh, with your thinking and pre-lab work. So, in lab here, we're marking down the speed and if you notice, it looks like they're wearing wetsuits. Right off, get on to the scales. They didn't discuss that. Let's add that to our materials. They wore wetsuits. They could have just gone without shirts, but they um, didn't want to how, you know, some places in America, they don't, I don't think they even want you to be on TV without a shirt on. 
So anyway, um, they're wearing those wetsuits. So we can put that down. If you're going to do it exactly like the um, Mythbusters, you got to have a wetsuit. And then t-shirt. Why don't we put down t-shirt? Well, let's do jumpsuit. And then if you do it yourself, you can just do it with t-shirts. And, well, you know what? As long as this, you have the same thing underneath the t-shirt you're going to weigh, that would be fine, actually. So it's just got to be the same wetsuit. Uh, the same thing underneath the t-shirt each time or the jumpsuit, okay? Seven hundred and eighty-five grams. Seven hundred and eighty-five grams. So let's put that down here. Seven hundred and eighty five grams. Okay. And what was the original weight? Seven fifty seven. Seven fifty seven. What? Cool. So uh, eighteen grams of water. And the results fate. Fully recorded. Oh, okay. So uh, 18 grams of water. What they did. 785 grams. What was the original weight? 757. 757. So we can put that down. They didn't tell us this before, but the jumpsuit is 757. That's how much it is dry. So a massive jumpsuit wet. Does that help clear things up? I think so. Now all these, this is too big, so I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. So shrink this down. Seven. Cool. So uh, eighteen grams of water, and the results faithfully recorded. Now Jamie's turn to be under the weather. Both walks clock in at around eighteen seconds. And the coveralls have soaked up almost the same amount of water. Okay, it doesn't look like they're going to give it to us. Verbally. Eight seconds. And the coveralls have soaked up almost the same. Okay. So, um, again, this is walk and run. That was Adam. And, and it looks like it's, like it's oh, oh, they put down the difference there. Okay, so if you look up there, it says um, Adam got 18, and um, Jamie got 17. So we'll put down 17, 784. See, it doesn't matter um, what the difference is. Like, what is the total mass? And we'll be able to tell. Okay, so our scientists are always arguing about what's the best way to do things. Amount of water. But what happens when Adam and Jamie up the pace? Okay, there's Adam. 
D798. Are you surprised at that? 798. Now, do we round up or round down? We'd round up. So we'll do 799. If it was 7.5, we'd round up. It was um, 798.4, we would round down. So now a little bit of water is important in this, but I'd say the nearest gram is good. Uh, once again, we've kind of gotten out of our, maybe I can just increase the size of this. There we go. Okay, what about Jamie? Can't be right. 798, uh, significantly more. On Jamie's run, the difference isn't as great. 793. So the question is, should they have each of them done it twice? Or do you think this is just enough? Two different guys doing it once. That's the kind of stuff you write over here in the advice and observations. 93. But the raw data is still pointing to an answer that flies in the face of science. The results aren't what I expected at all, actually. The numbers are really close. We're only talking about a matter of a dozen grams here and there. So when we average it all out, I think it's going to show that running, actually, you get wetter strangely what's the final result what's the verdict better to walk than run really yeah okay so we have got the information and so our data table does all the talking now they the speed thing didn't really matter did it because what matters is how far you're going and the walking is slower one is faster this should be true for whatever for um, whenever you go faster, you'll get more water on you. So that would be maybe a further investigation. Let's get this big. So ob advice, observation, try, um, try mm, sprint, try sprint. Um, try crawling, no, but, but actually that wouldn't be fair because, yeah, <laughs> I mean, we're talking about shoulders, right? If you're going like this, it'd have to be the same incline. You need to be walking straight up and down or crawling like that, like that. That'd be different too. Try crawling it. Try crawling. Okay, so don't lose those ideas. Ideas are money, people. So I'm going to get rid of this um, right here. So I'm going to tap this with two fingers, delete row. Now I have room. And we can get rid of this one too. It's unnecessary. It's just confusing. The speed does not matter. So delete column. Okay, I want to make it as easy for people to understand as possible. Okay, so results. This is what you do after a lab. You write up your results. In summary, you explain what happened. Both men um, got wetter by running. Is that, is that clear? I think so. So, um, oh, you could say by, well, let's see, Adam got 10 grams or 15 grams more, and Jamie only got eight grams more. So you could say by differing amounts. So it doesn't look like we could really predict whether you exactly how much weather you're going to get. 
So anyway, that's what the results are. And also in results, you can make a graph. Uh, and so graphs, pictures speak louder than words. Um, I think that's kind of true. Um, you could also say that uh, pictures worth a thousand words, and that's what graphs are, a picture of data. So if you want to throw in a data, a table, a, a graph, that'd be really fantastic. So amounts. Okay. So now let's go to this. I'm going to go back down to fit. So if you made a graph, I'd be very impressed. Um, so analysis, the results um, you get uh, wetter, you get you stay drier when wa walking, you stay drier by walking. Well, let's look at this. What did we say here? Um, our hypothesis, running, you stay drier. Okay, so the results, you stay drier by walking happened because, and why would that be? It's because the, because water, water um, soaks the front as you go. Now this is your explanation. You're not just saying that you got a different amount of water. You're saying why. So watch this. It says, and here's an email for you. We're interpreting this. Um, we're explaining that the cause of the results is why it happened it soaks you as you front as you go. Water soaks the front as you go. As you go. Period. I think that works. Okay. Hypothesis. So do we accept our hypothesis? Our hypothesis was if we run, we will stay drier. Well, it's totally wrong, isn't, isn't it? So um, we're going to say we reject. So you can just go like that. I reject my hypothesis because um, both men got wetter when they okay, it doesn't have to be a big explanation because we already did our big explanation here. The analysis where you do the big explanation. Okay, advice. Um, if I was to do this investigation again, I would use t-shirts. because they are cheaper okay um, actually that would be kind of a, a cool um, next experiment so the second a here is let me get rid of this if we we're going to do this experiment again I think it'd be cool to try t-shirts and have two t-shirts. You'd have one under t-shirt and one outer t-shirt, um, possibly. 
Um, so, or bathing suits, just so um, 